Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So click the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sabah, and today we're continuing to investigate jackknife estimator as a concept in statistical modeling and we're extending the intuition of jackknife into more complicated estimators such as the leave two out jackknife and in general leave an out jackknife and we'll discuss how to uh, calculate those in excel what are the differences between those approaches and what are the limitations of going as far as you can with this procedure First of all, the idea of a jackknife estimator is very flexible. You can apply it to any parameter that you can infer from data. However, here we will use it for an intercept and slope of a simple linear regression. We have got 100 observations, so sample size here. We can just count how many observations we've got. Let's say count the y variable. We've got 100 of them. And we've got the y variable and the x variable, the dependent and the independent. And we might want to know what the slope and the intercept are. The most natural way of doing it would be to just use the OLS regression. Here it's done using the Linus function, which produces the slope of 2.2348 and an intercept of 93.6412 and the respective standard errors. Let's apply leave one out jackknife first. And for a more uh, detailed application of that, please check this video out. And the idea here would be to resample our data 100 times, removing one observation at a time, and then our estimators of the uh, slope and intercept, as well as their variability, can be inferred from those resampled values. For leave one object knife, it's very easy to do. We could just remove one observation at a time. So for slope, for example, we can use the slope function, then check if our current observation ID equals the array of observation IDs. And if it does, you return nothing. But if it does not, you return the array of Y variables. And then, as we need the X variable as well, we can copy the cell reference here and change references to the Y array to the reference to the X array. And then we can close the parentheses, enforce the function, and enforce it throughout the entire sample. Here we see that the slope estimated by leaving one observation out varies. And it varies um, quite a bit, actually. It can be as low as 2.08 for observation 10, as high as 2.35, uh, for example, for observation 6. So again, leaving observations out can impact the estimator of the slope. And that nicely relates to the concept of outliers in statistical analysis. For intercept, we can just copy the function, paste it here and change the slope function to the intercept function. And that can be applied uh, analogously. The leave one out jackknife estimator for slope is just the average over those resampled estimators. The same can be applied to the intercept. For the standard deviation, we just apply a sample standard deviation function and enforce it on the array. And what we can see here is that those standard deviations differ from the ones uh, given in the OLS template by a factor of around 10, which is not uh, a coincidence, as 10 is square root of the sample size. In our case, because our sample size is 100, that prompts us to adjust it by multiplying the standard deviations we've got by the square root of the sample size we've got here. And that allows us to compare the estimators obtained from the leave one out jackknife uh, to the estimators that we've got uh, from OLS and see that they're close, but not identical. And that um, allows us to treat leave one out jackknives as more outlier robust uh, estimators. Uh, and those are very simple and intuitive to grasp. However, why leave just one observation out? Why not leave two at a time or three at a time? For two at a time, it's still reasonably doable and uh, implementable in Excel. For that, we'll need to construct 
a 100 by 100 matrix uh, denoting various pairs of observations that can be dropped uh, at a particular resampled estimation. For that, let's create a slopes matrix and we'll create an intercepts matrix below identically. Uh, for simplicity, we can use the sequence function here. Uh, here we'll create 100 rows, one column, uh, start at one with a step of one. And here we'll create a sequence with one row, 100 columns, a start of one and a step of one. And that quite neatly creates our 100 by 100 matrix. But what is crucial here is that not every cell of this matrix is meaningful. First of all, uh, cell 1, 1 would mean that we have to drop the first observation and then drop the first observation again, which does not constitute a valid leave two out check that free sampling because you can only drop uh, the same observation once. So the diagonal will need to be empty. What is even more important is that uh, the 2, 1 cell and the 1, 2 cell refer, for example, to the same uh, leave two out jackknife resampling because dropping the second observation and then the first observation is the same as dropping the first observation and then the second. So we need to only take one of each of those pairs. And the easiest way of doing it is to just select the cells above or below the diagonal. In this case, I'll select cells just below the diagonal. And that means that we'll need to um, input the first condition here. If our row number, so the ID of the first um, observation we drop, and we need to lock the column here, is, is less than or equal to the column identifier, and here we need to lock just the row, then we return nothing. But if this condition uh, is not fulfilled, so it means that we're below the diagonal, the row number is greater than the column number, we'll use the slope function, and then we'll introduce uh, our conditions for removing the observations. So first, if our column number is equal to the observation ID, we are not taking this observation. Then, if the row number is the same as the observation ID, then we also do not include it. But if uh, both are not equal to, uh, the observation ID, then we need to take the Y values first, the uh, dependent uh, variable values. And that allows us to specify the first array, the array of dependent variables for our leave to out jackknife estimator. Uh, but in the slope function, we'll need to input the array of X's or independent variables second. For that, to save time, I'll just copy this expression, paste it, and change the references to the Y array into the references to the X array here. And then I can close the appropriate number of parentheses and enforce the formula. We can see that in cell 1, 1, there is nothing, well, because it's the cell on the diagonal. If we enforce it throughout the first row, there is still nothing because these are the cells above the diagonal. But if we enforce it all the way down, we'll be able to see how each of those cells below the diagonal returns a unique uh, estimation of slope for a leave two out jackknife estimator. For example, if we leave the first and the second observation out, the estimator of the slope would be 2.2018. And we can verify it quite easily by just using the slope function and taking y variables from 3 all the way to 100 and x variables from all the way from 3 to 100. That returns an exactly the same slope estimator as we've got here. But what is beautiful about this implementation is it allows to drop any pair of observations whatsoever, which is not something that can be implemented in a straightforward way by just using a slope function and selecting some cell ranges. Uh, however, that's just the slope. For the intercept, we'll need to perform the same procedure. So we can paste our calculation here. That would be the intercepts. And the only thing that we need to change is to swap the slope function here to the intercept function. 
and then enforce it throughout our 100 by 100 matrix and see that again every single cell below the diagonal returns a unique estimation of an intercept for a resampling where a pair of observations is dropped. And now for the slope and intercept coefficients, we can just average over the respective matrices. Again, as a blanks are not taken into account, when those functions are applied, we don't need to worry about them. And the same for the intercept matrix. For the standard deviation, we apply the standard deviation function, sample standard deviation, onto those matrices as well. And that allows us to directly compare our coefficients to the ones obtained from prior estimations. We can see that they are all very much similar, with the slope increasing slightly as you leave more observations out, and the intercept being uh, reduced uh, consecutively uh, from uh, OLS to leave one object knife to leave two object knife. Uh, and that can be interpreted as um, negating the impact of outliers. As um, you can remove pairs of outliers, the uh, estimation of slope would be less distorted. Again, arguably, if you believe that outliers are distorting the initial OLS estimate by quite a bit. However, here, to adjust our standard deviation to be comparable to the standard error from the OLS regression, we need to keep in mind that it's no longer the sample size of 100 uh, because we have taken pairs of observations. And for that, we need to count how many estimations we have got. And here, we have got 4,950 uh, observations. This can be quite easily checked because as we've got 100 uh, observations, we square it to get the matrix, we subtract 100 to remove the diagonal, and we divide by 2 to remove duplicates, which is remove 2 then 1 or 1 then 2, that gives us exactly 4,950. But here we don't need to multiply by the square root of uh, 4,950, what we need to do instead is multiply by the square root of the sample size and divide by the square root of how many uh, observations we've left out. In that case, we have left two out. So we multiply by the square root of the sample size and we divide by the square root of the number of uh, observations we left out at each consecutive go. And that again, allows us to very naturally arrive at standard deviation or standard error estimators that are quite close to the ones uh, we have got from the leave one object knife as well as from the OLS regression. And that's about the implementation of the leave two object knife. It's two dimensional, you need to construct the matrix, but it's still nothing that Excel cannot handle. But what about a uh, leave three object knife or leave four object knife? For that, you would need to construct quite uh, massive uh, tables where you would uh, repeat every potential combination of triplets or quadruplets of observations and so on and so forth. And those can get out of control very fast and very easily. And this is why in practice, we are mostly dealing with leave one hour jackknife or at most leave two hour jackknife. Because especially if your sample size is large and 100 is nowhere near large enough of a sample size, leave three hour jackknife already becomes um, quite bulky and uh, quite hard to handle. And that's all there is about the implementation of more sophisticated jackknife estimators, in particular the leave two out jackknife. Please leave a like on this video if found helpful. In the comments below, I'm going to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics on that which record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider support on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.